He can, and how could you bet against Patrick Mahomes doing something like this? It would be Mahomes-esque if he would break that coming off of a year where he won the Super Bowl. Two of the three full seasons that Patrick Mahomes has played in, he's thrown for over 5,000 yards. Couple that with the tough competition in the conference and moving parts on the Kansas City Chiefs defense. They might need Mahomes to win a shootout every single week. Next up, can Jordan Love lead the Packers to the playoffs? Can he or can't he? He can, G. And the setup for the Green Bay Packers and Jordan Love with their schedule is going to let them get out to a fast start. Four of their first five opponents had losing records from a year ago. Four of their first five opponents were bottom five in defensive EPA. So just Jordan Love, as long as he's able to give the Packers competent quarterback play, should absolutely have this team in the mix for a playoff spot once we get to December. All right, and then one more. Can Aaron Rodgers get the Jets to a Super Bowl? Can he or can't he? Oh, what's understood ain't got to be said, G, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> of course he can. Of course he can. Aaron Rodgers is going to be the difference in those close ball games that the Jets found themselves on the losing side of a year ago. The Jets were 7-10 and 10 last year. If they had scored league average on offense, which is just 21 points in every single game, they would have been 11-6. Last three years, Aaron Rodgers only been held under 21 points 12 times out of a possible 53 games. Of course, Aaron Rodgers can be able to go over that number and get this Jets team to the postseason. Expectation is to win a Super Bowl, and if you're not in this locker room, maybe they, in their own yeah. minds they know they're lying to themselves. Arizona, yeah, I don't know what they're feeling. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for a little bit later. Uh, but, 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 yes, I think that is a reasonable point to make. But then we look at that thing. I mean, the Jets go into this thing genuinely believing that they have a chance to do it, yes? Absolutely. And this was a team that has a dominant defense, and to Chris's point, Greeny, now you have a chance to actually come from behind and, and supercharge all these weapons you've had from Garrett Wilson. Hold on one second. I don't mean to interrupt you. I, I, I'm sorry to cut you off there. I have a qu but Can we take that shot again? Uh, uh, Meg is directing our show today. I'm looking over your shoulder. That is not the Aaron Rodgers jersey that has been there for the last two months. I, I, I may not know everything, but I know my Aaron <laughs> Rodgers jerseys. That jersey was white. They sent it to, that is, I am, I'm pointing the finger at someone in this room has stolen my jersey. I mean, I mean, am I wrong? Got. That is not the same jersey that's been there the entire time. Well, you need two. I mean, you had to get the white one and the green one. Well, I, I, don't, I don't see the, where's my jersey? What has happened here? I, I, I don't understand what, where my, what, what, what is happening here? Wait, wait a minute. Is this? Why is, why is this jersey here now? Oh, look, the new guy. Oh, my God, look who's <laughs> here. <laughs> Who is that? Show yourself. Oh, it's oh, Hemba. Oh, wow. Hemba was back after four months of, of uh, off time. And you, what did you decide to do? You're already remodeling in here? You took my jersey down? All right, I want that out of, I'm going to, okay, here's the good news on this, Graziano. Yeah. I am going to have that taken out of the frame. Okay. And I'm going to wear it for every game this season, and we'll leave the green one <laughs> on the wall. I'm sure you don't want to wait for a third one? Like, are they doing a throwback thing this year? I think the white one is the throwback. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, right. so I think that's what we're going to do. Okay, Hembo, welcome back. Good for you. We'll do your sneaky uh, trivia question a little bit later. And he's got a top-flight defense that's backing him up, a top-five defense from a year ago. So, yeah, I I'm all about the Pittsburgh Steelers being able to set it up for Kenny Pickett to have this huge leap in year two. He's not your typical second-year quarterback. He's 25 years old, played a ton of football in college, and we saw in the second half of last year, this is a guy that went 6-2 and two in his final eight starts. So you saw some growth from the beginning of the season last year to the end of last year, and I think he's going to build on that going into 2023. He started 49 games in college, Graz, and, and I think sometimes, I don't know that you can be a first-round quarterback and be as under the radar as Kenny Pickett has basically been in his career. I think people viewed that as a draft without a quarterback. They talk mm -hmm. about it as though, well, we're just going to throw it. The Steelers would just throw a first-round pick at anybody. It's insane. Kenny Pickett is so much better than the world is ready to let on. And that Steeler team, I would call them a sleeper, but I don't know that anyone is sleeping on them. No, I don't think so. Look, I hope that it works out because I want to see – Ryan Clark's Burberry Steelers <laughs> suit that, I, that, that he had made uh, custom, I'm sure. But I, I, think, like, I, I think the Steelers are, are on the way up with Kenny Pickett. I just don't know, like, are they good enough 
to make this year's playoffs, right? Like, Kenny Pickett looked like a nice player second half of last year. Is he, is he Joe Burrow or Lamar Jackson? No. It, it, are, are George Pickens and Deontay Johnson, nice receivers. Are they Jamar Chase and T. Higgins? No. Like, like I, I think there's still a ways to go for Pittsburgh. I think they're on the upswing, and you cannot underrate Mike Tomlin. He's as, best, as good as anybody uh, at, at getting a team together and winning games. But I, I, don't, I don't have them there with the – with the upper echelon teams in the AFC just yet, and there's so many of those. Yeah, Greedy, Graz now the context is everything. He's the fourth best quarterback in the division, let alone the other players, in the, the other teams in the conference. Like, when you think about going head-to-head -head with Lamar Jackson and what's going to be an unbelievable improved Raven offense, we know about, obviously, Cincinnati. I think Cleveland will be a lot better with Deshaun Watson. I just don't see them being in the top seven when it's all said and done. I've seen Kenny Pickett this preseason. It's impossible not to be impressed by him, but I think – Week in and week out, you would take those three other offenses over Pittsburgh. So I just don't think they're going to be able to score consistently to make the playoffs this year. Like I'm being told Canty was shaking his head while you were talking. Chris, go. Yeah, because football is not played on paper. It's played on the right. field. And listen, the best players don't always make the best teams, but yep. the best teams always win. And one of the things we've always seen from Mike Tomlin is that he routinely finds a way to forge an identity with the guys that he has in his locker room to allow them to have success. The dude been a head coach in Pittsburgh 16 years. They ain't been on the under 500 yet. Like, this is one of the more talented Mike Tomlin teams that he's had over the last five years. So why would we think that they wouldn't find a way to be able to compete for a playoff spot in 2023? If they're able to stay healthy, Kenny Pickett and then those guys on the defensive side of the ball and the skill position players, especially the wide receivers, yeah, I think this team could absolutely find themselves in the tournament this year. They have the best de – Oh, well, so Miles Garrett, I was trying to think. Do they have the best defensive player in the division? I was going to say oh, T.J. Watt is, but Miles Garrett obviously belongs in that conversation as well. But he's right there. They're always good. We, we asked the question, what is your sleeper playoff team in the AFC? We can put the picks up there. Uh, again, I took the Steelers, even though I'm not 100% sure that they're a sleeper. You're, you're on the Cleveland Browns, who also may not really qualify as a sleeper, but somebody has to. I think there's a wide range of potential outcomes for the Browns, and, and, and they include some really good ones, right? If Deshaun Watson can be the player he was in Houston, even 90% of the player he was in Houston three years ago, then I think this team could make a big jump uh, offensively. And, and defensively, they bring in Jim Schwartz as the coordinator. They'll get better on that side of the ball. So, yeah, it's tough to find a sleeper in the AFC because we talk about all these teams so much, but I think Mike T did it. Tennessee. Yeah, I look, it starts with their offensive line. They signed Andre Dilla. They drafted Northwestern's Peter Skronsky. And they went out and they got DeAndre Hopkins. So we know Mike Vrabel's a really good coach. I think Ryan Tannehill will be resurgent this year with that offensive line. So if we're looking for a somewhat under-the-radar team, I thought the move with Hopkins was really interesting. To me, that means Derrick Henry's going to be there. They're all in. And I think they can catch Jacksonville this year. Canty, who's right? Is, 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 is Tannenbaum right that Russell Wilson's going to get benched? Or is Darlington right that Sean Payton needs to understand the assignment, and that is fix Russell Wilson? No, I mean, I lean more towards Mike T. The job in Denver is to win football games. That's how coaches, players are judged, wins and losses. Now, fixing Russell Wilson would be nice because of the investment that the new ownership group made in Russell Wilson, paying him a quarter of a billion dollars. But Sean Payton doesn't care about that. He's a Bill Parcells disciple. I was with him in Dallas. He's got no time for the celebrity quarterback, and it's not about what a salary cap hit dictates in terms of who he plays on the field. Remember, Sean Payton went 17-5 and in New Orleans with the combination of Taysom Hill, Jameis Winston, and Teddy Bridgewater. Sean Payton could win games with Jared Stidham, but it's just a matter of if you can get Russell Wilson to – harness his abilities, the things that he still can do at a high level, and fit that into Sean's scheme and play disciplined, clean football. That is the question, and that's more of a question for Russ than it is for the head coach. But if Russ doesn't play the way that Sean expects him to, I could absolutely see us living in a world where he gets benched in 2023. Yeah, I think because as much as I love Jeff Darlington, he's wrong. The assignment for Sean Payton is to win the Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos. Now, fixing Russell Wilson may be the most straight-line path to that, right? Because it wouldn't require a whole bunch of dead money and, and, and going out and finding a new quarterback. But if Sean Payton becomes convinced that Russell Wilson is not the guy to help him win Super Bowls in Denver, he's going to 
start looking for who that guy is. I don't think there's a player, I don't think there's a quarterback in the entire league under more pressure than Russell Wilson to perform this year because of what happened last year and what that means for his career and how we perceive it. This was a guy that was headed for the Hall of Fame. You know, if he plays badly this year, if he does not function within the offense the way Sean Payton wants him to, if he starts turning the ball over, yeah, I, I think Jared Stidham could play. Greeny, let me take you into the room of a new head coach in the NFL. They bifurcate the roster. Guys I inherited, guys I acquired. And the ones that they inherited, whether they say it or not, I'm telling you after 20 years, they're just treated differently. And Sean Payton is going to look at Russell Wilson and say, to Dan's point, yeah, let's hope it works out. But I had nothing to do with all those picks and all that money. Well, there's a part of me that wants to say that that is smart thinking on the part of ownership there because you cut your losses. There's another part of me that wants to say that is organizational incompetence to the absolute max because they went all in on Russell Wilson as much as you possibly can. We talk about the Jets going all in on Aaron yeah. Rodgers. Oh, they gave up much more to get Russell Wilson and paid him infinitely more than the Jets did with Aaron Rodgers. They're going to give up on him in a year and a half? Yeah, because they're going to say the scapegoat was Nathaniel Hackett and we moved on from him and we wouldn't have acquired him if he didn't sign off on it. That's my point. I need someone on my side in this argument. Maybe, just maybe, Marcus Spears will be that somebody. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.